Hey guys, Brandon Johnson here again. Thanks for joining me. Today we're looking at Church Street Blues. This is one of my all-time favorite songs to play and to sing. And I remember the first time I heard this song, I just wanted to learn it right away. Uh, I heard the Tony Rice version was the first version I ever heard, but it's originally written by Norman Blake. And the two variations are slightly different, and there's a million ways to play this song, but um, you know, specifically I'm gonna be focusing on kind of the Tony Rice version and the Norman Blake version. There's a video online of Brian Sutton actually performing the song, and he kind of talks about the differences between the two. You know, basically, they're the same, but the rhythm parts are slightly different in that they, use, they substitute the relative minor. So we're playing out at the C chord position, and we have a capo on three, but the relative minor of the C chord is the A minor chord. So in the Tony Rice version, he uses that relative minor, and in the more traditional, the Norman Blake version, he uses just the straight ahead C chord. And also there's a cool substitution that Tony Rice does with the B, B flat chord, where he goes from the C to the B flat to the F. So I hope you enjoy and let's check it out. All right, let's talk about Church Street Blues. Now, this song is really centered around the chords. We're really thinking about, you know, playing, playing this melody around the chord progression itself of the song. So. You know, the first, the first uh, bar of this song is centered around the C shape. And we're capo three. So, when you're playing Church Street Blues, you're really playing it primarily out of the C position right here. This, this C chord shape with capo on three. So we're actually in E flat. So the first thing you do, or at least the first thing I like to do on this song is you play an open A downstroke. And you're, you're holding the C shape here, so but you're starting with an open A downstroke with your ring finger, and then you're playing an upstroke on the third fret A string. So it sounds like, and then on the next string, on the D string, you're doing the exact same move with your middle finger with a downstroke, followed by an upstroke. And then right here we have two downstrokes on the lower half of the C chord, so. So it's the open G and the first fret B string. Those are all downstrokes. That's what it sounds like. And you're holding that C chord position, remember? Then after those two downstrokes, you're gonna play a pull-off, right? So a pull-off on the D string, second fret, to open. And you can see there that I added the, the open G, so you could kind of do a... where you're hitting that, that open G. So... And then after you do that little pull-off right there, you're going to get into the F chord position. So you're going to go for a, from a C chord position to an F chord position. Which is pretty, not too complicated of a move, but you're just kind of taking your middle finger and dropping it down to the G string. And then you're taking your little finger and you're putting it on the third fret D string. And that's just your standard F chord right there. So you're going from a C to an F. And after you play that F chord, you're doing a little pull off right there on a downstroke. Okay, so it's pretty much the same as the C, where you have your index finger on the B string first fret, and you're doing a pull off with your middle finger on the G string. And you're holding your F chord shape here.
Okay, so let's look at all of measure number one, starting with the downstroke, you're in the C chord position, and you're starting with a downstroke on the open A, followed by an upstroke, and then the same thing on the D string. One, two, three, four. Okay, one more time, measure number one. We're starting with an open A downstroke followed by an upstroke on the third fret A string. One, two, three, four. Okay, and going into measure number two, we're back to our C chord, back to our open C chord. And in measure number two, we're going to start doing a little bit of cross picking here. So we're starting with the C chord, and we're starting with two down strokes, followed by an up stroke. So we're still playing the C chord, but we've just taken our middle finger and we've taken it off. So we're, we're playing an open D instead of a, a second fret D string. Okay, so starting with measure number two, we're starting with an open open D downstroke, followed by an open G downstroke, followed by an upstroke on the B string first fret. And then while holding that C chord shape, we're playing the exact same thing, except we're starting on the third fret A string with the downstroke. Then we're jumping down to the G string with the downstroke open, followed by an upstroke on the B string first fret. So we're kind of going back and forth. This is this is classic cross picking right here. We're going back and forth between and just work on that. Work on those two those two back and forth, and, and work on your speed. So you know you start playing it slow, and then after a while you start getting a little bit faster. After that, we're doing more cross picking, and we're doing two down strokes, one on the open D and one on the open G, followed by another down stroke on the open D, followed by an up stroke on the second fret D string, and then we're doing a down stroke, up stroke, down stroke. So we're going. So it's the open G with the first fret B string on your index finger. Followed by second fret G, upstroke. Followed by downstroke open G, first fret B string. Okay, let's look at measure number two, starting with the two downstrokes on the open D and the open G. One, two, three, four. Okay, let's look at measures number one and two together. We're starting with the open A, downstroke followed by the upstroke, and the same thing on the D string with your middle finger, followed by two downstrokes. One, two, three, four.
Okay, and looking at measure number three, measure number three is identical to measure number one, except the only difference is, is that we're not playing the first hammer on on the A string. Instead, we're going directly into the D string hammer on, which is open D, followed by an upstroke on the second fret D string. We're still holding the C chord position here. And now we're going two downstrokes on the G and the B strings. Same pull off that we played before. Then we're in the F chord with an upstroke. Then we're playing a downstroke pull off on the higher register of the F chord. All right, measure number three. Same as measure number one, but we're we're starting with the hammer on the D string this time. Playing it out of the C chord position. One, two, three, four. Okay, going into measure number four, we have more cross picking going on here. And the timing is a little bit weird on measure number four. We're starting with an upstroke on the open D, followed by a hammer on downstroke on the second fret D string. So we're going upstroke, downstroke, hammer on, followed by an open G downstroke, followed by an upstroke on the B string first fret. And this is kind of the cross picking part where we're cross picking on the C chord. So we're going. Playing a downstroke on the second fret D string, upstroke open, downstroke third fret A string, downstroke two D string, downstroke open G, and upstroke B first fret. And that brings us into our C open chord position. So the timing is a little bit weird on that, so I'll play the first time around a little bit faster so you can hear what the timing is like, and then I'll slow it down the second time around. Measure number four starting with an open upstroke on the D string, playing out of the C position. One, two, three, four. Okay, this time a little bit slower. Measure number four. One, two, three, four. Okay, let's play measures number three and four together. Starting with a downstroke on the D string open, followed by an upstroke on the D string second fret. One, two, three, four. 